When you bump into a new ingredient from somewhere else that you've never seen before, how would you use that according to your own cooking system and your own cooking instinct? This is a little thought experiment that we like to do all the time when traveling or trying to get creative cooking for ourselves. Like imagining what a Mexican grandmother would do when she sees Guangxi waxy corn at her local grocer, or what would a Guizhou chef do with many kinds of cheeses at their kitchen. It's a fun thing to think about, but today we want to give that little game a go in real life because we are visiting America right now. Well, I've been here before, but I never try to go to an American supermarket and use the local produce to make Chinese food according to my Chinese cooking instinct. Although I'm no chef nor old grandmother, but I think we can still have fun playing around with the local produce and make something tasty. So now let's just go to a local supermarket and see what we can get there. All right, now that we are at a random run-of-the-mill kind of supermarket, let's go inside and see what they got. First, a vegetable section, and let's see what kind of local produce there is. Ooh, dandelion greens. Uh, this is something that I never had, and we don't. I never seen it at markets and supermarkets either. And let's just give it a try and see how it turns out. Oh, what's that? Ruta baga? It really looks like the bad holds high. I wonder if it's the same thing. The fancy vegetable. I still don't know how to eat it. That bok choy, it's massive. Ooh. Asian style. Savoy cabbage, green cabbage, carrot, celery, wonton strips? I don't understand. Oh, Brussels sprouts. So uh, this is actually Chris's uh, favorite vegetable. And when we're in China, he will actually sometimes get it from like those really expensive imported online shops on Taobao. And now that we're here, let's get some and make uh, our favorite pan roast uh, Brussels sprouts. Actually really good. I, I've been looking forward to this. Ah, berries. Oh, raspberry. They're like the price of gold in Thailand. So, yeah. Oh, tomatillos. We should at least get some and try it and see what it's like. We've been very curious about this and there's something very similar of, of this in Yunnan, but like we have no idea if they're the same. So I think we should just give it a try. What is this? I'm naturally drawn to root vegetables. Over here, there are some root vegetables that's like from uh, South America, I guess. That's very interesting. Looks like one kind of yam. Ooh, zucchini. Uh, I never seen it in the South. And I think there's something in the North that people would sometimes eat that's called xi hu lu. Uh, but they don't really look the same. And I know that Chris growing up hated zucchini. So, uh, but I think it's very similar to Lufa gourd, especially the green ones. So I'm gonna grab some and give it a go and see how he likes it. Doing it the Chinese way all in one bag in order to save plastic. Now I feel like undercover. Now that we got our local produce, let's handle the dandelion green first. It's kind of hard and fibrous and it tastes bitter. And I think it can be a good fit into the veggie slash herb omelet category, uh, just like the Chinese tune omelet that everybody loves. And 
As with most of the veggie herb omelette, let's blanch the greens first. Here we will use 250 grams of dandelion greens with the harder part of the stems cut off. And now let's toss it in boiling water and let it cook for 5 minutes to try to get rid of the bitterness. Then heat off, toss in 6 pieces of Italian basil to add some nice aroma. Mix and out. Let it cool down to touch. Then wring it dry like a towel. Now let's chop it up into 1 cm ish bits and set aside. Next up, take 3 eggs. Uh, season with a quarter teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon sugar, half teaspoon fish sauce, a quarter teaspoon black pepper. Whisk well till no stray strands left. Then toss in the chopped greens and give it a mix. And apparently our egg to veggie ratio is a little bit off here. So we'll add in an extra beaten egg. And now that seems fine. So next we can fry. Heat on medium to a 6 inch pan. Added 2 to 3 tablespoons of oil because egg needs oil. Let it heat up till bubbles are forming around the chopstick. Then pour in the egg. Jiggle or push to help the egg distribute evenly. Now patiently wait till the bottom side is nice and brown, then flip. Let the other side also get to the same level of light brown, then heat off and put onto a plate. And now a dandelion green omelette is done, perfect for some manto or a uh, lao bing. Moving on to the second vegetable, zucchini. Uh, it kind of feels like luva gourd to me, so I think I'm going to use it to make a dish that resembles a classic from the Yangtze River Delta, uh, si gua you tiao, which is basically a soft coat uh, luva gourd sauce poured over crispy refried stale you tiao. And while you can't really get a uh, you tiao deep fried dough stick at a general American supermarket, I think some stale or um, baguette will do the trick. So what I'm gonna do here is take a 10 centimeter long uh, baguette and cut it in half lengthwise. Then cut each half into four or five pieces to mimic the you tiao shape. Then instead of deep frying it and making it way too hard, let's just make some stovetop croutons to mimic that crunchy texture. So heat on medium. Add in 2 tablespoons of oil to a small pan. Put in the bread and just make sure to toast all 3 non-crust sides and then put them onto a plate when they are all nice and golden brown. When the you tiao equivalent is ready, we can make our gourd sauce. Heat on medium again. Add in 1 tablespoon of oil to a small pan. Toss in 2 cloves of minced garlic and fry till fragrant, about 30 seconds. Then toss in the zucchini that's cut into the classic biased wedge, just like how we'll do with many other gourds. Now fry the zucchini for about 2 minutes, then add in half a cup of stock. The classic is usually some uh, milky fish stock, but here we're just gonna use a box stock that we just picked up from the supermarket. So bring it to a simmer, cover, and let it cook for 3 minutes. When the gourd softens a bit after that 3 minutes, give it a taste because the salinity in every box stock is different. Here I think it can use a little bit more fish sauce. Then finally season with a quarter teaspoon sugar and an eighth teaspoon each of MSG and black pepper plus a small pinch of salt. Give it another taste and we can start thicken if it's good to go. And now slowly drizzle in a slurry of half tablespoon cornstarch and one tablespoon water. Adjust the thickness as you go till you get to a spoon coating consistency. Like here, I don't need to finish all my slurry to get to that stage. Once your sauce gets to this stage, now just heat off, drizzle in about half teaspoons of toasted sesame oil, quick mix, then pour it onto the baguette crouton. And now the American version of si guan you tiao is done. So for the sprouts, uh, forgive us for cheating a little bit to have Chris make something that he's done before. Jing gok or fried roast Brussels sprouts. 
So dingo is a Cantonese technique、uh, that you'll mostly see with meats like chicken, ribs, intestines. And if you're curious, you can check out our fried roast chicken video up here.、Um, but we also find that this technique works really well with hearty vegetables like Brussels sprouts. So to make it, what we'll do first is swirl in a couple tablespoons of lard onto a nonstick pan. And of course, feel free to use peanut oil if you want to. Then, over a high flame, slide in 300 grams of halved Brussels sprouts and start to fry. Because this pan is wider than the stove, what we'll need to do is move the pan around the stove to help everything cook evenly. Then, after about a minute and a half of all that. Move the pan over to a burner set on medium low. Cover and let that cook for about four minutes. Having two burners going at different temperatures can be a decent idea when cooking Chinese food on a Western electric stove because sometimes the frying can move faster than the burner. So then, after that time, move it back to high heat, uncover, and continue to fry in the same way as before. Once the sprouts are brown to your liking, about a minute and a half more for us. Toss in some ginger and garlic slices and start to give everything a stir. Season with the usual, which we'll list on top of the screen, and then swirl in a teaspoon of soy sauce and stir fry that all for about a half a minute until combined. Then just transfer over to a bowl. And then the jingo Brussels sprouts are done. So this is not a、uh, recipe video per se. We are mostly just having fun in a very different setting than a Chinese kitchen. But we hope you enjoy this video, and we hope it can bring you some inspirations for your next grocery trip as well. And as always, check out the little quick instruction in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon, and of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.